Congrats, you've got an Ingersoll Rand air compressor, and with a little bit of care and maintenance, you can enjoy optimal performance. This video is all about finding out why your compressor isn't coming on or it's tripping a breaker. To start, if you're not experienced in how to safely interact with electrical components, please partner with an electrician to ensure your safety. If you are experienced and able to take this on yourself, you're gonna need an adjustable wrench, combination wrenches, hex head wrenches, ratchet and sockets, both a flat and Phillips screwdriver, pliers, and a digital multimeter. We'd also recommend safety glasses, cup-proof gloves, and steel-toed shoes while doing the job. And this whole thing is pretty detailed, so plan about an hour of your time to do it. One complaint the Ingersoll Rand support sometimes gets is that the compressor just isn't turning on, or it's tripping the breaker. When it comes to the breaker tripping, that can be caused by several issues. One could be either the breaker or wiring are size too small for the fully loaded amperage rating of the compressor. If that's the case, contact an electrical professional to determine the proper breaker and wiring size based on the requirements of the compressor. Another issue could be the pressure switch is not unloading the head pressure before the compressor attempts to restart. Now, the unloader valve and the pressure switch should allow the pressurized air that's in between the pump and the air tank at shutoff to be released. If that's not the case, and it's not getting released, it will create back pressure on the system at restart, and that will put a real strain in the electrical system and cause tripping. Another possible reason is internal issues in the pump, and that could cause it to bind. This increases the running amps of the compressor. Any mechanical issue in the pump that can affect the crankshaft and belt wheel from rotating are gonna really hinder the motor and belt's ability to turn. That holdup will cause a surge in the amperage and can cause the breaker to trip. The last way this could happen is if there are any issues with the electrical components of the compressor. And we're going to go through a lot of those right now that will hopefully cover any questions you may have. The first box to check off if the air compressor isn't starting is finding out if voltage is making its way to the compressor. And if it is, you can see if the voltage is too low or too high. If the incoming voltage is too low, it won't energize the coil, pull in the contactor and start the compressor. And if the voltage is too high, the electrical components in the compressor can get damaged. A good rule to remember is to stay within 10% voltage range of the compressor. You need to make sure the incoming power is landing in the correct terminals on the compressor. For example, on this 2475 model, the power leads in the ground wire will connect into the starter box on terminals L1, L2, and ground. Now, on compressors without a magnetic starter, like the single stage and TS models, the incoming power will connect to the terminals in the pressure switch. Once it's been determined that the compressor is being properly supplied with power and the unit is still not starting, an electrical professional should test the individual starter components. First, check the two fuses in their starter box and make sure they're not blown. It's called a resistance check. See that voltage still passes through them. Check the contactor by performing a voltage drop test and resistance check. Next thing to do is test the coil for full nominal voltage across terminals A1 and A2. A bad coil will not energize and can't pull the contactor in when the unit is turned on. You may need to check the overload by measuring power across terminals 95 and 96. If the overload has been tripped, reset it. Also, be sure the overload is set correctly based on the compressor's amp rating. To find the proper setting, multiply the full load amps times the service factor rating on the motor. Set the dial on the overload to this number using a Phillips head screwdriver. Lastly, you may need to check the off auto switch for continuity with the selector switch in the auto position. That's terminals three and four. If voltage is moving through the magnetic starter, check the pressure switch and motor for the presence of nominal voltage. With the pressure switch, be sure the two wire leads and ground from the starter are terminated correctly in the pressure switch. The two leads should land on either set of line motor terminals. The white line is the line in, and that's gonna be on top. The black line is the motor, and that'll be on the bottom. The ground wire attaches to the bottom of the pressure switch box. The pressure switch contact should close when the compressor is turned on and the pressure is below 135 PSI. The contacts will be open when the compressor shuts off and there is more than 175 PSI in the air tank. Check terminals 2T1 and 6T3 on the overload in the starter box to ensure the right amount of voltage is going to the motor. If nominal voltage is present, then you've got an issue with the motor. Take a look at the motor capacitors. Just looking at them will show you if they're leaking, cracking, or swelling. The motor capacitors can also be tested. An electrical professional can perform a visual inspection of the capacitors for swelling, cracking, or leaking. They can also check the readiness of the parts by using a digital multimeter. Again, an electrical professional can inspect and test the motor, or you can replace it. Now with the motor. First, make sure power is shut off to the compressor. Then remove the belt guard by taking off the PVC fasteners and mounting bolts. 
Once you've done that, loosen the motor mounting bolts and slide the motor just enough to remove the belt. Then remove the motor sheave or pulley and set it aside. You're going to reuse that. Next up, loosen and remove the power cable from the junction box on the motor. Then remove the motor mounting bolts and be very careful as you then lift the motor off the unit. After you do that, you just follow these steps in reverse and you've got a new motor in your compressor. To replace the pressure switch, you gotta shut the machine off and release the air pressure from the tank. Doing this prevents any major damage happening to the unit, your surroundings, and most importantly, you. After that, you'll wanna remove the pressure switch cover. Once you've done that, make a note of where the three wires are coming from with the pressure switch because you're about to remove them. After doing that, you're also gonna remove the copper unloader line from the side of the pressure switch. Remove the pressure gauge and safety relief valve from the pressure switch. Then, with a wrench, loosen and remove the pressure switch from the tank stem. Remember, be sure to turn it by its base and not by twisting the top or the cover. If you twist it from the top, it may cause damage to the contacts and terminals inside. Now that you've got it off, just reverse all these steps to install the new pressure switch. The last thing you want to do after all this is use Teflon tape or sealant on the threads of the pressure switch, pressure gauge, and safety relief valve during reassembly. A little hint to help you out. There's a small plug on the back side of the pressure switch that may not be included with new part. If you see an open threaded port on the rear of the new part, use the plug from the old part to fill this spot. Otherwise, air will leak from this spot when the compression occurs. Something to keep in mind is that various models and styles of Type 30 compressors will have similar components but won't exactly match the segments in this video. For instance, a unit with a low oil level shutoff switch may not start if the oil level is low or the contacts on the switch are open or out of adjustment. By following all of this, you've got an Ingersoll Rand air compressor that's fired up and ready to deliver the right power for your project.